This weekend, the thrilling climax of NCAA March Madness, but my next guest wants to permanently end one aspect of the madness, the fact that the players aren't getting paid. Tonight, the final four face off, Texas Tech versus Michigan State, Auburn versus Virginia. Monday, the new champion will be crowned, but on the first day of Sweet 16, Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut released a report called Madness Incorporated, how everyone is getting rich off college sports except the players. Murphy points out the contradictions of what he calls the college sports industrial complex. The NCAA tournament is one of the most viewed sporting events in the world with more than 100 million viewers. There are 97 corporate sponsors. It earns more than one billion a year in media revenue. As the report points out, that's nearly as much as the entire NFL playoffs, including the Super Bowl. Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut joins me now. Senator, we have something in common, and that is that in high school, we were both the guy who ran the pool. Mine yeah. was for amusement purposes only. So was mine, yeah, but so was mine. No money involved <laughs> in my high school pool. <laughs> Scouts are. So why, why is a free education not enough? Well, because a free education represents 12% of the money that, for instance, Power 5 schools are taking in uh, in revenues for college sports. This is now a $14 billion industry, and that's just the money that's coming to the universities. You add on top of that billions more that are being made by the shoe companies, the apparel companies, the TV networks. Um, and to tell students they should just be happy with 12% of the pie when they are responsible for all of the eyeballs that are watching the NCAA tournament and the college football playoffs, um, to me, is a civil rights issue. And they deserve to have more of the return that comes from their labor. So the NCAA needs to understand the fundamental inequity of making all sorts of adults rich off of the labors of these kids who are told that the scholarship is enough, especially when, frankly, many of these kids are not getting the academic experience that I got in college or that someone with an academic scholarship gets. They are being commanded to spend a lion's share of their time getting ready and organizing their lives for and around college sports. Uh, they deserve to get more than they're getting. A civil rights issue for racial reasons, for labor reasons, or both? Both. I think when you have these kids acting as essentially employees um, because of the amount of revenue they are generating for all sorts of adults around them, you have an employment rights issue. But you can't hide from the fact that the majority of the athletes that are playing the big time college sports, football and basketball, are African American, and almost none of the adults who are making money off of them, the coaches, the ADs, the CEOs of the big athletic companies, uh, are African American. Um, when you have a whole bunch of adults who are white making money off of the free labor of a whole bunch of young people who are largely African-American, that has to be part of why we consider this a civil rights issue. I, I know from reading the report, Madness Incorporated, that the Zion Williamson episode was a, a break point for you. Explain why. So Zion's shoe uh, comes undone and the next day the market value of Nike tanks by a billion dollars. Um, the idea that an amateur athlete could have that much impact on a private company speaks to me as to how fundamentally broken the system is. Now it turns out that it seems as if Williamson had an insurance plan um, so maybe he would have gotten some compensation had he been so permanently injured that he couldn't continue to play basketball but he would have never seen a paycheck uh, based upon his athletic endeavors and yet everybody around him Duke the NCAA the the shoe companies that outfit him all made money off of his labors and had he gotten injured he would have never seen a paycheck as a as a professional athlete that seems uh, that seemed to me the the epitome of what's wrong with this arrangement my recollection is the same of yours, that there was an $8 million insurance policy in that case. How would it work? I don't know if you've thought this through entirely, but would there be a pool in which everyone would share? Would Zion Williamson be able to benefit even more so than his teammates because he's the one with marquee value? I don't think the burden is on me to figure out that system. I want the NCAA to at least 
try to put some options on the table as to how you would create the lines as to who gets paid and how much and who doesn't get, get, get paid. Um, the fact of the matter is the existing system is super convoluted that allows for coaches to make millions of dollars that tells the students who they can and can't work for during the summers. So the new system would certainly be confusing as well, um, but it wouldn't be as unjust as the existing system is. There's a proposal out there to let students make money off the sale of their life Businesses, uh, whether it be in video games or the sale of their jerseys. That certainly makes uh, sense to me, but that to me was just a start. I know that basketball is taken very seriously in your state for both men and for women, uh, yet I'm reminded of my friend Senator Arlen Specter as an Eagles fan when he took up the issue of the Patriots cheating, and some said, don't you have better things to do? I'm sure you'll hear some of those critics. What do you say to them? Yeah, you know, I can walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, I spend far <laughs> more of my time working on matters of war and peace and uh, trying to fix our broken health care system. But uh, I do think this is a civil rights issue. I, I do think it's emblematic of bigger problems we have in society where a small group of moneyed elites are taking advantage of the labor uh, of a set of individuals who don't have as much political power. Uh, and so uh, I do think this speaks to broader political realities in our country today. And as one of the youngest members of the United States Congress, as somebody who cares deeply about college sports, if I'm not willing to speak up for these athletes, and by the way, we're talking about thousands and thousands of athletes, um, I'm not sure who is. A final question. Of all the data that's in Madness, Inc., what most jumped off the page at you? For me, it was the sports facilities. What's going on at Clemson and in other locales? Yeah, remember, this is going to be the new normal. Clemson has a miniature golf course, a recording studio um, for their athletes. These schools are now creating these teen fantasy camps to try to recruit athletes. And uh, UConn will have that kind of facility soon as well. Now, Clemson has a big enough athletic program that they can probably pay for it with the revenues from ticket sales, but UConn can. Um, neither, can a lot, than most, neither can most NCAA schools. And so you're gonna have taxpayers put up money for these facilities which are going to become standard issue on college campuses and I think it's better for all of us to get ahead of it now before taxpayers are asked to fit the bill, foot the bill for something that really has almost nothing to do with either the academic or athletic mission of these schools.